How much does the average American spend annually dining out? Hmm. Find out the answer to this question and more this week on Reality Check. Every week we'll talk with an internet personality about what life costs, hearing about their financial journeys along the way. This week's guest is Mitch Glass. Mitch is a world traveler and founder of Project Untethered, a multimedia brand that helps aspiring digital nomads achieve their dreams of maintaining financial stability while traveling. So what's something surprising or unexpected that people might not know about you? Ooh, well, I would say that it might be that my home base is in Cali, Colombia. And I'm married to a Colombian mm -hmm. that we met mm. in salsa class. And some people, or maybe just me, <laughs> like to call me the gringo salsero. So you can you can salsa. That's I love, cool. love salsa dancing, yeah. Awesome. Well, Mitch, we've got these 10 financial questions that the average American probably should know, but most don't. So we're going to play. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, but let's see how this goes. All right. Well, let's get started. Let's jump right into it. First question is a multiple choice. I'm going to start you off easy. Okay, thank you. What former president's face appears on the $2 oh bill? <laughs> is it A, Thomas Jefferson? Is it B, James Madison? C, James Monroe? Or D, Andrew Jackson? I'm going to say B. It's actually Thomas Jefferson, A. No way. I can't Which, even remember the last yeah. time I saw a $2 bill. <laughs> I, know. I know a $2 bill is a little obscure, but uh -huh. they are still printing and in circulation, so. <laughs> yeah, where do you get a $2 bill if you, if you want one? Go to the bank or something? You can just go, yeah, you can go to the bank and ask for one. And now you will, so you can see Thomas Jefferson on there. Uh-huh, I'll never, you'll never forget. You'll never forget that. <laughs> All right, question two. What is the median rental rate in New York City for a one bedroom apartment? Median rental rate for a one bedroom apartment in New York City. Yikes, okay. Never been to New York, but I'm gonna say one bedroom. I'm gonna say $2,500. Aww. It's not quite that high. It is pretty high, but it's um, it's actually only two thousand, ah. two thousand fifty nine. Wasn't, so, wasn't yeah. so far off. <laughs> yeah. All right. Question three. Aside from housing, what is the next biggest expense for the average American? Aside from housing, I would say either food or health insurance. I'm gonna go with food. It's actually transportation. Ah. <laughs> the, the average American spends about $819 a month. That includes, you know, your car maintenance, your car note, mm. insurance, yes, gas, yeah. all of that sort of stuff. $819. That's steep. Well, <laughs> it is a lot. It is a lot. You have been traveling the world for years. It's been a what while. would you say is the the biggest misconception that people have about the digital nomad life? Oh, I think there's actually a lot of misconceptions, but I'd say one of the biggest ones is that it's just all fun and games and working from the beach from your laptop with beautiful views all the time. Um, it's actually... That's totally what I'm picturing. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's totally possible and that does happen sometimes, but... Um, I would say it's a lot more work and a little bit more stress than what people imagine because uh, especially if you're, if you're traveling a little bit faster, um, which we tend to do and probably shouldn't do, is because when you're always having to constantly plan on where you're going to go, what you're going to do, how you're going to get there, where you're going to stay, that's like a whole nother job. And so you spend oh, half yeah. the time figuring out your next plans, half the time trying to figure out how to live where you are currently. Actually, my half the time, half the time, that doesn't add up. Part of the, part of the, um, part of the time I'm still work, with you. I get it. Yeah. A quarter of the time working and then with the, the rest of the time that you have trying to squeeze in to try to enjoy the destination. So there's a lot that goes into it. Question number four. What is the average monthly cost for disposable diapers for one baby? So the monthly cost to diaper a single baby. Wow, you are just throwing the hard ones at me. <laughs> never never had a baby either. <laughs> um, for one baby, I would go ahead and say 
How many diapers do babies use per day? First of all, <laughs> um, I would say the average baby uses probably about 10 diapers per day. 10. Okay. Then I would say perhaps $200. Not a cart that high, and I'm sure parents are grateful for it. It's about seventy dollars a oh. month, or eight hundred and forty dollars a year. Way yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is understandable because you don't have children, and so it kind of gives you like a little peek into. Uh -huh. Well, that is a relief, a relief for the day when I do have children. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what are the average closing costs on a single-family home purchase? in the US. Average. Just the closing costs. So not like a not like a down payment or anything like that. Um on the average house, I would say about five thousand dollars. I am giving you that. It's sixty nine hundred, which is a very specific number. Yeah. Totally I was going between 5, five and six, but I yeah I didn't know how much prices had changed recently. Yeah. I, I saw you doing the math. That's awesome. I need a calculator. It's hard to do math when, <laughs> when you're on the spot. <laughs> Question six. It's a multiple choice. Okay, thank you. What is the most affordable United States airport to fly out of? Do you think it's A, ATL in Atlanta, B, ILG in Wilmington, Delaware, C, DFW in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, or D, BOI in Boise, Idaho? I'm going to go with Dallas. It's actually ILG in Wilmington, Delaware, of wow, all places. I wonder, I wonder why that is. I was thinking that maybe like the biggest airports that are most popular and yeah. the most flights would be have the cheapest options. Hmm. So have you, do you have any tips or maybe hacks that you've discovered to maybe save on flights or hotels or just in general to avoid overspending when you travel? Oh yeah, lots of them. Um, for, for Americans at least, the biggest hack for saving on, on flights would be to use credit card points. I don't even remember the last time we paid full price for, for a flight. We've saved thousands and thousands of dollars because we'll just we'll just open a, a travel credit card that has like a sign up bonus, and then usually you have to spend a certain amount on that card in the first few months. And so I just put all my purchases that I would normally buy anyways on the card, and then I'll get the sign up bonus, which can be like usually between fifty thousand, a hundred thousand points, so maybe between five hundred and fifteen hundred dollars, depending on which one. And then after I get the sign up bonus, I just throw the card aside and do it again with a different one and do it again with a different one. And the trick is some of these cards have annual fees. And so before the year is up, you can just call and ask if you can downgrade the card to a card that doesn't have an annual fee. And then that way you can just rack up tons of, of miles and points. And then whenever it comes time to buy your flight, you just search using points instead of cash and you normally just have to pay for taxes. And wow, I love that. I like I like too the little tip of like calling in and <laughs> downgrading the card. That's that's yeah. definitely some insider secrets. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's super important. I always I always like to put like a reminder on, in my calendar so I don't forget to to downgrade it. Otherwise, you'll get hit with the, the annual fee for the next year. Cool. All right. Question seven: What is considered a poor credit score? using the FICO model. You have multiple choice? <laughs> <laughs> it is not. <laughs> um, poor, I would say, is it below 550? Yes, exactly. Anything between 300 and 579 would be considered poor. Uh, okay. All right, question eight. How much does the average American spend annually dining out? I... I have no clue. <laughs> I, the last time I've been out, out to eat in a restaurant in the United States has been a while. I'm going to say, did you say per year or per month? Yeah, per year. Per year. Per year, I would say $2,000. 
three thousand dollars. I think that annually. counts. I think that counts. You know what? I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> yes, I you, need it. I Thank saw you, you doing. I, I saw you doing math math over there. I'll I'm take, giving you that one. I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> yes. Um, so, question nine: How much does the average dog owner in America spend on their pup? Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind, we Americans love our doggies. <laughs> yes, you guys do. Oh, I'm American too. Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> um, average that they spend on their pup. This would include products and services. I'm going to say another $3,000. Not that high. It's only $1,480. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I clearly was, we don't love our dogs that much. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always hear how, how dogs are like replacing children in the U.S. And so I thought. <laughs> All right. The reality check. The final question. What percentage of Americans own a home? Whoa. Okay. What percentage? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 40%. 65.8 percent wow okay. that's americans i know i know under I mean, underestimated it yeah i think that um the average american like wants to travel the world for sure but they also you know have different financial goals that they want to achieve and probably feel like they have to choose one or the other how do you how do you kind of recommend that people balance that balance, you know, like living and going out and adventuring, but also staying on track with their financial goals? Well, first, I think it's important to distinguish, you know, someone who just wants to go on a couple of vacations per year versus someone like me who leaves for months and years at a time. <laughs> um, for me, the answer is to find a way to earn money while you're traveling and that you can do while you're traveling, obviously. Um, for someone who's just looking for a vacation and trying to balance that, it's it's probably a different story because you're not going to be working and traveling at the same time. And for those types of people, I would just um, recommend being really clear on what your priorities are in life and spending money on the things that are really your priorities. And so, you know, if some people might be obsessed with new shoes. Some people be, might be obsessed with tech, having the latest tech gear, whatever. Uh, other people might not care at all what their shoes are like or if they have the latest phone. And so I think it's important to, to take the time to, to consciously think about what are my priorities. And if travel is one of the top ones, then budget more for travel and less for the things that you don't really care about. Maybe society says it's important, but that doesn't necessarily mean means it's important for every single person. Absolutely. And just for a person who wants to start the digital nomad life, what do you think are the first steps? Like before they even go, go anywhere, like what are the first steps to kind of set themselves up for success? Depending on the person, like if the person has never even left the U.S. or done anything, I think the very first step is to take a trip to see how you like it or see if you can, you know, get summer vacation for a month or a couple of weeks longer than just a normal, you know, five day vacation and go to a country where it might be cool to be a digital nomad and just kind of check it out and see how it is before you go, you know, uprooting your life and starting businesses and changing jobs and all the planning <laughs> just to see that you actually like it. And if you do actually like it, then, um, then you have to figure out how you're going to support yourself financially. And there's there's a couple of different ways. Um, there's kind of like a scale in, of three different things you could do. And there's pros and cons to each. There's just like a normal remote job, which is probably, you know, the fastest to start and the fastest to get like earning a normal income. But it's the, le the, the downside is it's the least flexible. And then you have freelancing, which you're basically working as a contractor for your clients. That gives you a little bit more flexibility, um, but it's a little bit longer to start up. You're not you're going to have to build up your client base. And so that's like the the middle, like the Goldilocks option. And then also the last one is like to become an entrepreneur and start your own business. Like we have our blog and our YouTube channel, and that will give you the ultimate flexibility because you're not answering to anyone. And you also have the, the highest income cap because 
you're working for yourself, not for, for someone else. But obviously it's the most risk and it takes the longest to build up. And so you kind of have to decide which one of those you want to go for, or you could just go through a progression, you know, and start with the fastest to start, which is the remote job. And then once you get on the road, start doing freelancing on the side until you can replace your remote job and then start building up your entrepreneur business until you can replace, replace your freelancing. And that's kind of what I did and it worked out nicely, but um, you, you just have to have patience, I guess, and and figure out which which option is best for you. Absolutely. I really think that's an awesome idea where you, where you kind of suggested doing a test run to make sure that you like it. <laughs> because like we talked about the misconceptions earlier, people have this idea of what they think it's gonna be like, and maybe you travel abroad and you miss home and you actually don't love it as much as you thought you would. I like that idea of a, of a test before you fully commit yourself to it. Definitely, it's, it's super important. Well, Mitch, three out of 10, that's not bad. Hey, I'm gonna take it, I'm not ashamed. Good. Well, thank you so much for playing Reality Check with us. If everyone is inspired about your story and just want to learn more about your journey, how can they find you? Um, you can you can check us out on projectuntethered.com or we also have a YouTube channel where we share a bunch of you know cheap travel tips, how to find cheap flights, how to find cheap hotels, um, a bunch of stuff about how to start digital nomad life and work remotely from different countries. And so you can check us out on the website or the uh, the website or the YouTube channel, Project Untethered. Awesome. And if you guys missed it, don't worry. We're going to drop that down in the description below. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for playing this week's episode of Reality Check. If you learned something, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Think you have what it takes to beat our guests? Find out in the other episodes of Reality Check. See you there.